October 26, 2020. In October of 2018, this tractor came home and has been in the garage for the past two years, slowly being worked on. It's a 1926 Fordson Model F made by the Ford Motor Company in Detroit, Michigan. I've had a lot of questions about this tractor from some of my friends, so I'll give you uh, some information as I know it, and it's not 100% in some areas for the details, but it'll get you by with just enough info. So again, 1926 Fordson Model F. The radiator takes approximately 12 gallons of coolant, and on the side here you have a gas tank that is broken into two segments. It has an internal tank uh, to fill with gasoline for starting the tractor and then by the use of this valve underneath you would switch it from the small gas tank to the main kerosene tank so it starts on gas switched over run on kerosene it was a lot cheaper back then so underneath this is the valve to select uh, your fuel this is the top of the air cleaner and the tube going over to the top of the manifold or the vaporizer as it was called. This is the mixing chamber for the air. Now my tractor did not have this exterior gasoline tank, but I was lucky to find one that fits on it. Uh, the Ford Motor Company decided to keep these little ears cast onto the air cleaner for a few years before doing away with them. So I found the tank, mounted it on there. I think it dresses it up a little bit. Um, this manifold, or the vaporizer as it was called, is a Model 295 Holly. So the fuel comes down from the tank, goes into this uh, fuel bowl. There's a float in there, kind of like a modern carburetor. However, the fuel will then go into the vaporizer. It goes in between two stainless steel plates that are behind this cover. And as the fuel vaporizes, it travels up this tube into the mixing chamber. Uh, this rod over here controls your throttle. And then, you know, by the miracle of science, it works just like a regular car or truck. Spark plugs, um, they're kind of large. They are half inch pipe plug in diameter. But the plugs are either made by Autolite, which these are, or you can get them that are still made by Champion. It's a fan on the back side of the radiator, nothing special, there's no water pump, it's all a gravity system. As the water gets hot, it travels back up through the uh, engine and the radiator to cool off and the colder water uh, cycles back down through the bottom. I think it's called a thermosiphon system or thermocycle. This little cap down here is called a commutator or a timer and it best is represented by a modern day distributor cap on the uh, car. On the back side of that cap is a little roller that's attached to the camshaft. On the side there's a uh, power takeoff or a belt pulley. All of the equipment back in these days were run by a flat belt such as threshing machines and combines and um, uh, balers, things of that nature. So this was how to power those uh, farm implements back then. So we'll go around to the back and uh, the fenders have toolboxes that are integrated into them. Some of the parts shared from the Model T. This little lock down here I believe is the same piece that they used on the Model T to hold down the uh, sides of the hood. It's an extension on the draw bar for hooking up your plow. Nice solid comfort seat. It's, a, it's another toolbox up here on the dashboard, back side of the tank. This controls your throttle. This controls the commutator and the uh, down position. It uh, grounds against a uh, brass terminal that grounds out the system to shut the motor off, raise it up. It has the commutator in the retarded position which means that the spark will fire at 15 degrees after top dead center and when the timing is advanced it is firing at top dead center. The reason you want to have it in the 
uh, lowered position is so that when you're cranking the motor it fires as the piston is on the downward uh, rotation. If it started to fire while you were on the upswing, you run the risk of a backfire and, in a sense, breaking your arm. So uh, it's very important to have the timing set correctly. This rod over here just operates the choke. Clutch pedal. It's a three-speed transmission, three forward, one reverse. A little uh, cap down here is where you fill the transmission and rear end uh, fluid. It takes mobile 600W super cylinder oil. About three and three quarters gallons goes into the rear end. So in your modern vehicle, you're using either 30 or 20 weight oil. This takes 600 weight. So speaking about uh, the fluids, the radiator uh, takes approximately 12 gallons of coolant. This cap over here is where you fill up the engine oil and it takes approximately 11 quarts of oil. This is your coil box up here. Inside there are four wooden ignition coils and I've added a period accessory, a hotshot battery box. There's nothing in there except for a large lantern battery that's six volts. This tractor has an internal magneto. On the flywheel there are magnets mounted and as the uh, flywheel turns those magnets create a magnetic field with a stator plate that is bolted to the end of the engine block and as that rotates it creates electricity. The electricity comes out of here and then uh, depending on the setting of this knife switch it is either going from the internal magneto to the coil box and then the commutator regulates the firing of the spark plugs or we're using the uh, battery in here to go directly from the battery to the ignition coils and the same would follow. Um, and like I said, it's just a lot easier to start on the battery and then switch it to the internal magneto for running purposes. This large box up here is called the air wash and that is a huge air cleaner. It uh, draws air from the outside and air travels through a tube uh, that's cast into this box. There's a set of brass floats in there, so the water travels, excuse me, the air travels through the water. It's cleaned and it goes through into the top of this uh, air wash, air cleaner, travels through this pipe and into the top of the mixing chamber to uh, have fresh air supplied to the engine. Uh, down here are two petcocks. There's an upper and a lower. That's how you check your oil level. So as long as you have oil running out the top petcock when you open it up, you know you have enough oil. If it doesn't run out, you add oil. That's it. Uh, there's a drain uh, up here underneath the radiator to uh, let out all of your fluid so the engine doesn't freeze up in the winter time. And short of that, I uh, hope you enjoyed the, the video, a little tutorial on this tractor, and have a good day. Bye.